a driver attempting his first Indy 500 will lose that valuable track time needed given his inexperience of a two and a half mile track. As I mentioned, he's a rookie and learning the super speedway style of oval racing can be quite challenging for a young driver. I wonder if it would be a little bit less challenging if Indy next had uh, some sort of 100 mile race of their own at this track. I don't know. Maybe we could call it the Freedom 100 or something like that. I don't know. Uh, just an idea that popped in my head here. Maybe we give these drivers a little bit more uh, experience leading up to their first Indy 500. But in all seriousness, Kobe, do you think there was anything Lundquist could have done differently to prevent this wreck? And do you anticipate his confidence taking a hit because of it? Long live the Freedom 100. Gone but never forgotten. <laughs> but but on, but on a serious note, Ben, on, honestly, I think that this was just a situation of, you know, a young driver just trying to find the limit of the car and he found the limit. And I, I, I guess Linus, you know, will go back to the drawing board and, and, and understand where he went wrong here. But sometimes in these cases, the car just takes off and then you're just a passenger af after that. And it, it can be easy to lose your confidence, you know, after taking a, a hit, especially at a track going go, going this rate of speed because the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is a very demanding racetrack, especially when you're going 230 miles per hour down into turn one. And, and when you crash at this track, you crash hard. There's no easy, there's no, um, I guess, soft crash at Indianapolis. There's nothing but hard crashes. And that was quite a smack to the wall that Linus Lundquist took but he's not he's certainly not the first young driver you know to have an accident at, at the indianapolis motor speed where I, I, I remember um alex polo he, he had he had a heart crash at indianapolis you know and still end up coming back to have a good race and then paddle paddle award i believe it was his first attempt at the indy 500 he he had a really hard crash and almost ended up going upside down that i believe that was the that was the one he failed to qualify for when he got bumped from the field. So Lunk was, you know, definitely not the first young driver to have an issue here at Indianapolis and it, it can affect your confidence, but I think Linus Lunk was, is, 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 is very, is very strong on the mental side when it, when it comes to these races. So I, I don't think it's going to hamper him at all. Yeah, you're right, Kobe. I think a lot of people uh, forget that Pato award. Uh, you know, everybody obviously remembers Fernando Alonso failing to qualify, but that was a Carlin partnered McLaren entry and the two Carlin cars were driven by Max Chilton and Pato Award and they were the other two that also failed to qualify that year so Pato Award has been there uh himself as a rookie uh at this track and at this race but as you said and as we talked about at the top of the show he's bounced back and has been in contention to win it the last couple of years uh things gone slightly differently or if he lifted when he shouldn't have or uh you know kept his foot in the gas or, or whatever the case may be uh done things slightly differently on the last couple of laps you know we we could just as easily I think be talking about him as a potential Indianapolis 500 winner. So uh, certainly not all hope lost for uh, Linus Lundquist here, but you have to think it, it's going to rattle him a little bit uh, as we go into the most important part of uh, qualifying week here in practice week. Uh, but hopefully he can rebound from that. Let's talk about uh, the driver that used to drive that number eight Honda uh, for Chip Ganassi, former winner of the 500, nearly went back to back last year. Even he had a big crash in the afternoon. That's Marcus Erickson, his number 28, Andretti Global Honda, Got really low in turn four, ended up getting loose, spinning out hard into the inside wall. Then it slid down the track into the inside wall on the front stretch before making contact a third time with the attenuator at the end of pit lane. What would it mean for the 28 team if Erickson has to go into qualifying without much time to shake down uh, that backup car that they have to bring out after his crash today? Oh, that's definitely a situation that the 28 team doesn't want to be in. But after looking at their speeds on the on the no tow report, I think that they're going to be perfectly fine and get into the Indianapolis 500 without having to go to the last row shootout. And this is a point that brought up on the NBC broadcast today on Peacock. It was the fact that when, when Colton Herta had his scary crash, I believe it was on Carb Day when he flipped over. Andretti tried to rebuild his car in time for the race, but you know it just wasn't right. It was it was it was slow to end up retiring the car because he was like going dangerously slow around that track. But the thing that Erickson has on his hands that Herta didn't have for him was you know he has time on his hands. It's it's, it's best that you have a shunt now rather than you know on carb day and. <laughs> And then, you know, you're just on, you're on a race against the clock to try to get the car ready for the race. But I, I'm, I think Andretti is going to take their time with this car, work through the night if they have to, and make sure that that the backup car is just as strong as, as, as the primary. And, and, I, and I think that they're probably going to have a lot more time to get this car ready, especially when you, when you look at the forecast and what could be coming from Mother Nature coming soon. But, yeah, I don't, I don't think this crash is going to slow down Erickson's efforts for the month of May.